Hey guys, welcome to the Juniper Links accounting channel. My name is Caroline and today we're going to have a look at free agent software. So this is bookkeeping software that you can use to keep track of invoices, expenses and your bank transactions when you're running your own limited company. So I think free agent is one of the best accounting software for contractors and freelancers and just generally small business owners because it's got a load of features that are really useful for individuals that are just trying to run their own business and keep it as simple as possible all in one place. So without further delay, let's get started with the video. Okay guys, so I just wanted to do a quick demo of free agent for you so you kind of understand what is going on and why you may want to look at using this software. So like I said, I found it to be the most user friendly. It may not be the case for you, but from my experience using other softwares, this one seems to be the nicest to look at, the nicest to use, the most straightforward and also has all the features you would want. It's, it's, it's got everything you would need apart from CAS employer scheme. So if you are doing that, then it might not be a good fit to use free agent. And this is a demo account, so I can kind of show you here. So when you first log in, you'll arrive on this page. And like I said, it does have a profit and loss calculation for you. It does have a corporation tax calculation for you. In this particular case, there is no income, so there's no corporation tax because the profit is negative. So that's why zero. And then you have a carried forward balance that is distributable. And this is your dividend figure. So when you update the software, make sure all of your expenses, all of your invoices and all of your bank transactions have been added in and explained as necessary. Then you can come here and check and see the available dividends you can take from business. And this is very, very, very helpful because it makes sure you never overdraw from the business and it makes sure you can always pay company taxes. So to add expenses, you can just, oh sorry, to add your invoices, there's a work section. You've got all sorts of options here, but just click into invoices. And you can see here all of these invoices. These are just test ones. Like I said, this is a demo account. If we're clicking into here, you've got the actual invoice itself as a test. You've got, if you're VAT registered, you'll get the VAT number showing on there. You have your own company number showing there. You've got your bank details showing there for payments. And also the client's details as necessary, all of the VAT. And you've got this payment here. So what I was saying, when you get your bank transactions through on free agent, you can actually pay for invoices and things directly from the bank account. Um, and I know that sounds really confusing right now, but I'll get there in a second. So <laughs> the next section that you would need to use is my money expenses. Again, your out of pocket expenses are going to be for anything you did not pay for with the business account. So things like mileage are going to be very common. You can add new mileage, you can add expenses, you can pick how much VAT is being reclaimed, you can pick capital assets, whatever you need is going to be in here. And when you pay yourself from the bank account, it'll show up like this. It'll reduce the balance owed to you for expenses. The other section you can check out is my money salary. So in here, there's nothing in there for, so far this year because obviously we're not running any salary, but you'll see your pay slips when you do start running salary and that'll be in My Money Payroll. You can pretty much set up whatever employees you need and start running payroll for them. You'll see what their total pay is, their total tax, the total national insurance is due, all that kind of thing. Next we have the banking tab. Like I said, you can actually explain what's happening in your business accounts as you need to. So as you can see here, there's an invoice receipt that's been allocated against an invoice. These are all purple because they've been manually added. When you set up bank fees, they'll all be in red. And then you get to explain what they're for. So you just click on them like this and then select whatever type it is. So in this case, it's invoice receipts and you can pick the invoice to pay. And expenses, the same thing. You select the type, so it's now outgoing transactions, you know, the type changes, just like payment. And then you can pick the category of the payment with whatever it was supposed to be for. You've got the tax payments down here for corporation tax, PAYE, whatever you need. 
and then just click Save Changes when you're done. One of the most helpful tabs is the Taxes tab because, like I said, that self-assessment section is in here. You can see for last year. So this is like a self-assessment form you can enter all of your details into. You've got your UK interest and dividends, so you can put yes or no for that. You've got pension, all that stuff. When you actually mark payments to yourself as dividends in the software, it'll add the dividend section for you automatically. So you don't have to enter those. Anything in the software that's been recorded, such as salary and dividends, will be in here automatically. So if you, you can see there's, there's basically the whole form for your self-assessment in here. You can go to employment. And in here, of course, when you create an employee and start paying them for salary and such, it'll show up their total pay and total tax figures in here. So if it's for yourself, you'll see your own salary and tax adjustment section, which normally you don't need to do. And the tax breakdown is extremely helpful because here you'll actually get a calculation of all your income minus the personal allowance and then the actual tax due to HMRC. So you could actively track how much is due to HMRC. Obviously they have this here where it's not open yet so it takes a while for them to switch over to the current tax year or last year's tax year in this case um, because they have to do a lot of testing with HMRC but once that's up and running these personal allowances will be correct and you'll see the tax liability. So it's a good it's a good place to keep track of, uh, kind of like an estimate of your tax. It's not going to be the exact figure, but you'll kind of get an idea of what you need to pay. Then there's the taxes PAYE section. So if you're running salary for employees, you'll see exactly how much you owe to HMRC. And then, of course, the VAT section where you can see all your VAT returns. So when you're doing your invoices, they'll all show up in here and you can submit them. So, for example, if we go into June. You go in here, it'll show you a full calculation of what's due. You've also got the full report section here. It'll actually list all the VAT due on your invoices and all the VAT due on your expenses. So it'll do the calculation for you and then give you a net figure to be paid. Let me pick one that actually has something in it. That would be helpful. It says it's not on flat rate scheme, so that's helpful. All right, so here's like an example. VAT return, go to full report. As you can see, all of these invoices here, so if the date falls into this VAT period, they'll be added in. And obviously, zero rated VAT. Uh, if you're VAT registered, you should be charging 20% VAT on all your services, unless they are actually zero rated services. So keep that in mind. And purchases, any VAT you spend on purchases can be reclaimed on the standard rate VAT scheme, which you can track in here. So you can double check that before going to this screen and actually submitting the return. So this is a read-only copy of the software, so I can't actually submit anything yet. But if it were active, you'd actually have the button to go ahead and submit the things you need to do. And then finally, a nice section is up here where you have your company's name. This is Boggle IT as an example. <laughs> go into settings and you'll have all sorts of things you can customize in the software. So you can add users. So if you're going to add employees for your salary, you can add them as a user in here. You can add company logo, company details. You'll need to fill out some basic info here like your address. You've got data export functionality. You've also got email templates for when you're sending invoices, which is quite helpful. You can make your own themed invoices. And then you've got the accounting side of it. So like your accounting dates for your company. You've got the VAT registration details that you can enter. You've got the payroll. In payroll, there's only one thing you can do, or there's only one thing you really need to look out for is switch the PAYE and I payments to quarterly because it's easier to do it that way, way less hassle. And also the employment allowance. So if you've got two employees earning over the national insurance threshold, you can claim the employment allowance from the company. Now, of course, this could change in the future, so keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> but if you need to claim the employment allowance, just tick this box and it will do the calculation for you automatically. It will remove employer's national insurance up to a certain threshold. Once you surpass the threshold of no employer's NI, then you will have to pay it again. But 
this will happen when you've got more employees because there'll be more national insurance to pay. And as I said, you've also got the construction industry scheme here, perfect for if you're being a subcontractor. For construction industry employers, you will need to look into another software option because Freed does not support that at this time. Integrations, you've got open banking. This is actually a recent thing, kind of fun. <laughs> Transactions will be pulled through very quickly because you don't have to go through a third party anymore. You've also got some other integrations and security type things here. So plenty to customize, plenty to look at, but the main things to do are gonna be updating the software. So entering your invoices, entering your out-of-pocket expenses, and updating your bank transactions. So if they're on automatic bank feeds, make sure you go in and explain the transactions because then the software will know what they were for and how to account for them properly. So again, just make sure you click on it. It'll show up in red, first of all. Then you can select what it was. And you've got the secondary category options here for all sorts of different types of expenses. So that's always fun. <laughs> And after you do that, you go back to the overview page and you can see the profit and loss box here showing you the available dividend figure in the bottom right corner. And also you've got a tax timeline. It's kind of overlooked because just this is in the way. <laughs> just click on, click on that and you'll actually see all the upcoming submissions that your company needs to do. And also it shows the personal tax deadlines as well. So here you go, 31st of January, 2020. It's the next self-assessment deadline. So that's why I recommend Free Agent, just because it's the easiest to use and it has all the features you would want to track everything and also things like running payroll. And yeah, so it's got all the features, the functionality, and it's also user-friendly. You can amend things pretty easily on here. And yeah, so that was just a quick demo of Free Agent for you guys, just so you know what I'm talking about. Do yourself a favor, get some kind of software that works well for you and you will be fine. So that's it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, found it helpful. If I missed anything or if you've got any questions, feel free to comment below. And other than that, I hope you have an awesome day. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, leave a comment if you've got a question, subscribe for more, and also leave a like if you found the video useful. And we will see you in the next one.